on Trish um, on one of these caps, guess which one? Um, <laughs> and uh, I do consulting for a living and sometimes I give talks like this for fun uh, and education also. Uh, so tonight I'm going to be telling you about how to be networking-ish um, when you're awkwardly social. So there we go, this is the sort of things you'll be learning tonight. Uh, see things like when you're in a room full of other humans uh, and you can't remember what words do. Uh, how to cope when you're in a room full of strangers uh, and, you know, just don't cack yourself or anything. Uh, and also tips for just making these lasting connections because just turning up and looking at people isn't enough in networking. You actually have to relate to them and keep talking to them and stuff like that. But don't worry if all that sounds very difficult because I'm going to let you know how to do it. But first, you may be thinking, who am I to teach you such skills, this extrovert? Um, well, let me tell you a thing or two. I know it didn't used to be like that if I stand over here and not block a terrible photo of myself. So this is a photo of me back in high school. Uh, I couldn't find the original uh, when I went through my Google Photos, but I found this one that I put through this howold.net service, which tries to guess my age and gender, and it guessed I was 48, um, and I'm still not 48, but it thought that I was, yeah, no, I was 15. So, uh, just to give you an idea of how I behaved as a teenager, uh, let's see, my hobbies included, like, not talking to people, and Magic the Gathering, and uh, that's a fantasy novel in my hand right there, which I won for being good at maths. Um, <laughs> that trophy on the other side, don't get any ideas about, oh, sports, no. No, no, that was for extracurricular study I did uh, for Theory of Music Grade 5. And I got the best score, hello, because there were only two people who were doing that um, in my school. So, quite the achiever, as you can see. Uh, I was really bad at public speaking, uh, I hated it, but my mum made me go into a lot of a Stedfords, uh, so that didn't actually make me better, it just made me more terrified. Uh, and also, I didn't go to a lot of parties, so I never learned things like the nut bush until maybe a few years ago. I'm like, how does everybody know the steps? Um, yeah, and... Uh, that was pretty much me. Oh yeah, also, I recently got invited to a high school reunion, like a 20 year one, um, and I was looking at the people who were talking about it, I'm like, who are these people? <laughs> I don't remember any of them because I never talked to anybody. So, that was me in a nutshell. So things got not better. Um, back around, what is this, 2005-ish? Uh, so that was when I moved to Sydney, the big smoke, if you will. Uh, keep in mind, I grew up in Rockhampton, okay? So when I'd moved to Brisbane, that was already the big smoke. Sydney was like, what? Uh, yeah, so I didn't really get other humans in general. Still crap at public speaking. Uh, hobbies included not leaving the house and depression. Uh, and so, yeah, I mean, one example of my terrible networking skills was when uh, I worked at my first job at Microsoft. What? Uh, I was very intimidated by this whole scenario of working at this cool software company. <laughs> I call Microsoft cool. Um, <laughs> that's how cool I was. Uh, anyway, so I went on this uh, work trip once, right? There's this dinner with my manager's manager, um, who was flown in from China uh, to have a dinner with us for some reason at the Opera House, right? Very intimidating, right? So I went to uh, shake his hand. And he tried to do, you know how some people you try to meet them, some people go for a hug, some people go for a handshake. This guy went for the, like the cheek kiss, right? But it was like, I, yeah. So I'm like, I went, <laughs> like, like I tried to shake his hand and he sort of like pulled me in to go for the cheek kiss. And I panicked and I missed and I head butted him <laughs> in the face. And, <laughs> and all I could do was laugh it off and sort of, oh. boss's boss. Um, yeah, so that's how cool I was in such social situations circa 2005. Yeah, stick it to the Mandridge. Yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> like that, Microsoft. Um, 
<laughs> anyway, this is me now, this, you know, networking queen. Uh, I like talking to people. Uh, turns out most of them are okay. Uh, I do this um, international keynote speaking thingy, uh, which are, means that I get invited to places and you know what that means. Um, and then, <laughs> and then uh, yeah, I have these hobbies which are a little further out of my depression, magic, the gathering, former comfort zone, like singing um, and uh, doing art and playing Dungeons and Dragons, uh, which is actually like, I think I've regressed there a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> you know, can't win them all. Uh, yeah, so how did I do it? How did I achieve this um, magical thing? Uh, so first of all, I read some books because I'm a nerd and this is how I learn things. Uh, so I read this book called uh, How to Win Friends and Influence People because I didn't realise Dale Carnegie has this reputation for being this massive a-hole. And, uh, and I just read the title and I was like, winning friends and influencing people, that sounds like a thing I want. So I read it and to be honest, it just blew my mind. I was like, what? It was telling me things like, when you talk to people, you should listen to them. And, uh, you know, like, you know, relate to them, that kind of thing. And I'm like, whoa! That, you know, that had never occurred to me before. I thought that when you talk to people, you know, you're supposed to be uh, talking to them, being an interesting person, you know, telling them things about me that they will find interesting. People don't care. People want to talk about themselves, as it turns out. And if you just sort of keep Parroting back to, ooh, a very interesting person I just met. Oh, I didn't know you had a donkey. Like, things like that, right? Then, then that's actually what that, they will actually say back to you things like, wow, you're an interesting person. <laughs> what they mean is like, oh, I'm an interesting person. Um, yeah. Uh, oh, I had another thing to say, which I wrote on my notes. This isn't awkward at all. Um, oh, yes, it was about being brave. Because, uh, see, I'm lucky because I'm a naturally quite a brave person, despite everything I just told you, but I, mean, I was brave in little ways and I had to build up to the bravery of talking to strangers and whatnot. So my, so as an example, my earliest uh, memory of being brave was when I was about four uh, and my parents tried to get me to take some very yucky medicine and they tried to get me and my brother to both take it and I was like, this is going to make me sick. So I took one for the team, took the medicine, vomited everywhere. I've got your back, bro. You know, I've just yeah. So this is an example of things you can do if you're brave. Um, maybe not at a professional meeting, <laughs> but well, you know, it's practice, right? You got to practice being brave. You got to practice talking to people. Honestly, that is the main secret to this: is you got to keep sort of hurling yourself out there, doing brave things talking to people, and then retreating back into your shell and just recovering for a while, and then doing it again. <laughs> okay, so uh, this is you at the moment. Disgusting and caterpillary. Uh, but, and you know, you may be this way for a myriad of reasons. Uh, some of you, for instance, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I might just say that maybe you just hate people. That could be a thing. And, you know, no judgment here. You know, some people are jerks. But uh, some of you uh, may have some other issues, like, for example, a mental illness related issue, like anxiety or, or autism or. OCD or any of those, and those are really hard, okay? So I just want to sort of put that out there as saying, this talk won't cure you of that, <laughs> but I do want to acknowledge, and you should acknowledge yourself, that you have an additional hurdle, right, when it comes to this whole networking, social interaction thing. So be kind to yourself, all right, when you go on your networking journey, okay? Um, and everybody else, also be nice to people because you never know when they've got something like that going on, like most of my good friends do, and uh, maybe myself. Uh, anyway, <laughs> face blindness, that's a thing. Some people have that, like me. I, that's why I don't remember anyone, okay? Like, check out my friend, what's his name over there? Like, <laughs> CK, Christian, in, always known as Interloper. I've known this man for like eight years, all right? <laughs> okay, mainly on the internet, I might say, but the last time I ran into him, I did this. 
ages until he just he just sort of looked at me and was like, interloper. That's his screen name, all right? So this happens to me a lot, a lot, because I just can't. And I, the face blindness is where is when you just can't you can't sort of differentiate faces very well. It's a real condition. It's really weird. I didn't realise I had it until recently, and a lot of things make sense. So you'll pick up things more from context, right? Like if I'm expecting to see a certain person at work, then it'll be like, well, that narrows the options down, right? Uh, but, but yeah, when I come to a meetup like this and people just show up, surprise, Trish, I'm here, then I'm like, oh, it's you. That's good. So yeah, if you have face blindness, all right, I, I would, like me, I, I, and this happens to you a lot, just, just roll with it, just bluff your way through. I just pretend I know everybody now, <laughs> just in case. And sometimes they will be put on the back foot, like, oh no, we met before. I'm like, yeah, I think we have. Like, so, and, and see, that makes you feel less awkward, but now they're on the back, ah, now who's in charge? Right? <laughs> so that's a trick you can use, yeah? Um, you know, it might just be that you just haven't had a lot of practice doing social networking, right? Uh, in which case, hey, hey, now's your time. Practice social networking. Or just <coughs> networking, or just social, what am I talking about? Yes, here is my advice, right? So that you can become the beautiful butterfly you see before you, okay? So advice number one is uh, just fake it till you make it, okay? So uh, one way you can do this is if, if you get in this situation a lot where you meet a new person and you just Oh, words, I can't remember them. Make yourself a little script that you're just always going to say. Because the trick is, they're going to be different people each time, so nobody's going to know your terrible secret, right? <laughs> so your script can just be things like, ah, uh, so where do you work, right? If it's a professional meetup, there's always a pretty safe one, you know? Because everybody, well, not everybody, but you know, a lot of people have a job, and if they don't, then. Uh, I, I don't know, that is awkward, isn't it? <laughs> but that's on them, that's not on you. You're going to be got good odds on that working for you. Uh, yeah, so uh, another one is, um, have you been here before? You know, don't say, does it come here often? Because that's a different thing, okay? Just say, have you been to this meetup before? That's, I know they sound almost the same, but trust me, they're not the same. <laughs> uh, yeah, um, oh, remembering people's names, I'm very, very bad at this, okay? But my one trick is that if you can't remember their name and you're at an IT setting, just go with Dave because most, <laughs> <laughs> most of them are Dave, right? That's been my experience anyway. Um, <laughs> Lorraine and I were always talking this afternoon about doing like a percentage of Daves in all of the meetups, like running a script on them as part of like a monthly thing, which I still think we should do. I'm very interested now. Uh, okay, uh, oh yes, as per the book that I read, just take a genuine interest and listen to people. So uh, the problem with, I think the hard part about networking with a room full of nerds is that you can get into this weird stalemate, right? where you don't want to talk and they don't want to talk because you're both freaking introverts. So you get into this thing where you'll just stand there and be like, oh, tell me all about yourself. And they'll be like, oh God, I never thought that this would happen to me. Uh, yeah, so yeah. So if they're a talker, great, you've got no problem. All you've got to do is just keep on loving the question. Oh, tell me about your job. That sounds interesting. Tell me about being a donkey herder. Oh, I never knew that that was a thing. Oh, can you integrate that with Bitcoin? You know, <laughs> just rolling it on there. You know, just, um, but if they're not a talker and they're just, uh, what do you do for a living? Developer, and that's all you get from them, and they don't talk again. Then this is your time to just babble like an idiot. Um, because they're going to appreciate it. Now they're on that side where they're, they're just going, oh, I don't know words, I don't know how to interact with people, my brain is frozen. And if you just stand there and fill in the silence with words, then this is, in a, in a very low level nerd way, this is, this is a social interaction that's happening, right? And, and my experience is that both people sort of emerge very awkwardly as friends. So, yeah, you can babble about anything, by the way. Um, Simlish. Hmm? Simlish. Simlish, <laughs> this is a reference to The Sims where they just yeah. make up gibberish, which 
Um, uh, I guess, but there is a chance they're going to think you're kind of mad. So, <laughs> which uh, we, we will cover exit strategies later in the <laughs> talk. <Yeah. laughs> I would recommend you just start talking about uh, I don't know whatever you, whatever it is you usually goes on in your head. Maybe no. <laughs> Rewind that. No, don't do that. Uh, I would say stuff like uh, what you did at work that day. What are some challenges you're facing? Blah blah blah. You know, interview yourself. Imagine they ask some questions. Well, I'm glad you asked me what I do for a living. I am, a, you know, a person who analyzes. Bitcoin virtual reality futures, you know, and you just talk about that for ages, right? Or um, complain about something, that's always fun. Well, all these people these days trying to get me to buy their Ethereum. Seems like a thing. Yeah. Bitcoin is cool too. Yeah. No, wait. Yes. Ask people for help. Okay, I do want to put a little, uh, you know, proviso on that because last time when I gave this talk I recommended this as advice to uh, just ask a person for help if you want to get to know them and then everyone started asking me for help with just random things <laughs> like, like, like I go, I get LinkedIn to work properly, like stuff like this, right? And, and I was just a bit like, I didn't mean it that way. I mean, plus, I mean, uh, so when I say ask people for help, what I mean is... Uh, First of all, not me, because I'm a consultant and I will charge you for that. Uh, second of all, uh, I, I sort of mean it more in like a flattering, let's start a conversation way, right? Like, if you know somebody who's been bragging about that they're an amazing data scientist or something, right, and you want to know about data science, then you can say, hey, I have a problem in a data science thing, and you can, oh, sorry, I'm just looking at my friend who did this literally the other day and exploded in his face, but, um, <laughs> but, Theoretically, this will work for you. Uh, you. You can ask somebody about, oh, I, I have a data science problem. Uh, can you can you help me with that? And then that starts a conversation. You know, you've got a, you've got a common interest there. Don't just ask it if you don't care. Obviously, it's going to be something that is actually useful to you. Don't just do it to get your foot in the door. But uh, but I, I guess the, the thing is like, it's a good way to connect with somebody and a good way to get knowledge. Huh? Everyone wins. And. Why not just ask people for lunch or coffee? You know, that's not creepy, it's totally on my foot. Um, you can do that, don't worry about it, it's fine. Uh, so yeah, just uh, you know, if you want to get to know somebody in the, in the community, say, uh, yeah, I don't, why don't we grab a coffee sometime to talk about blah, okay? That's the important part, right? Uh, I think it's a, it's a weird, murky one because I've, I've sort of gotten to know people where I say to, say to the pay, hey, since we like we have, some common professional interests, let's get a coffee and talk about it. That's also fine. But if you just sort of have met someone for the first time and just ask them out for coffee, it sort of sounds like a dang. So uh, I would say, why don't we get for coffee, talk about uh, JavaScript or whatever it is you, you're talking about, right? You've got to have something to talk about. The other reason for that is you don't want to get to this coffee and sit there and be like, oh crap, I forgot who this person is and what we talk about, right? Have a topic there, talk about it, yeah? It'll be way less awkward. But you can do that, all right? You know, like, if, like somebody's working on something you're interested in. This is what IT people do, right? We learn stuff from each other. Do that. Uh, oh, yeah, and if you get a book in a time with people, because where I see a lot of people go wrong with the whole let's just meet up for a coffee and talk about work and whatever, or talk about anything, is then they go, uh, well, I'm free on Friday, Wednesday, and Tuesday next month, but also a Thursday in May. Are you free on any of those days? And then you get in this really long discussion, especially if it's online, right? Now, it takes forever, and at some point, somebody's going to forget about it or get bored or whatever, and then forget, and then just it'll just never happen, okay? Uh, or they'll just go, let's do that sometime. Yes, sometime, and that's <laughs> code for that's never going to happen. Uh, so. The trick to this is you give two options every time. Monday afternoon or Thursday morning. Are you free on either of those times? And then they can just choose one. And if neither of them work, throw out two more options. And usually that kind of gets you there a bit faster. Or you can use some software tool to automate that whole process uh, called Calendly, which just sort of links into your calendar and then you've got to keep your calendar up to date. But then they can schedule in a meeting immediately and it's very convenient. But uh, that, that's a lot more work, but if that's 
the type of person you are, like me, then yes, you can go down that road. Just be prepared to uh, do a lot more work than you really need to. Uh, yeah, so if this is you, right, the little bird in your head, ah, screaming when you meet a person for the first time, you freeze up. Um, there's ways you can make it easier for yourself, okay? Uh, first of all, you don't have to go all out. You don't have to come out of this talk and go, I'm a networking champion now, I'm going to go to all the meetups, I'm going to meet all the people. Uh, just ease into it, buddy, just slow down. Yeah, uh, you know, try going to, to maybe one meetup, one extra meetup, you know? Um, one a month, something like that. Don't wear yourself out, especially if you're an introvert. <coughs> Uh, and by that I mean the sort of person who gets energy drained from doing this type of thing, right? You don't want to use up all your spoons, so to speak. Uh, bring a friend along, huh? If you have a friend. <laughs> no judgement here, alright? Uh, but if you have one and they want to come along to things, yeah, bring them along. Uh, you know, worst case it means that at least you'd, if you're huddled in the corner, not wanting to talk to anyone, there's another person with you and it's going to make it feel a bit better, yeah? Um, otherwise, you and the friend have already started a discussion group and you can just include a third and it's much easier. And you and the friend already have a rapport and you can, you know how this works, right? Or at least you'll find out. First make a friend and then bring a friend. Uh, just own your awkwardness, right? Like I'm doing now. Uh, so, if you are an awkward person, you jumble your words, you don't know, you don't know how anything works anymore. Just get it out there. Just say, "Hey, I'm really awkward. I, you know, I don't know how to meet people or anything, but I'm giving it a go, and that's why I'm here at this meetup tonight." Hi, you know, people, at least you set some expectations, yeah. So if you suddenly vomit and run out of the room, <laughs> nobody's going to be surprised. Uh, as well as that, it also means that. Uh, it's going to make you feel a bit more at ease when they just sort of give a little laugh and go, okay, no problems, I'm also awkward because we're all in IT and look how many people turned up, come on. <laughs> uh, yeah, and look, it, it is practice. Practice does make perfect, alright? So just practice, practice, practice. Okay, so some exit strategies. <laughs> so, um, yeah, because we all get stuck in these conversations that we don't want to be in. And, I mean, sometimes there's some inappropriate behaviour happening. So, for example, I have two sons. Um, they're both about this big and they're both cats. And when they like to bond with each other, what they like to do is the big one will sit on the kitten's face and bite him in the nads. Now, I don't know if this is typical for men bonding, but I just want to say that's not appropriate in a professional <laughs> Okay? So, uh, I mean, look, we've all, we've all hit on the, maybe I, I've hit on the occasional co worker in the past, and until I got good at it, it was very inappropriate. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> There's a time and a place, okay? And this might be the time because it's like 7 o'clock, but it's definitely not the place, okay? We're keeping ThoughtWorks a very unromantic area and we're doing our best to keep it away. Okay. Uh, so yeah, inappropriate behaviour aside, don't be that guy. If you do encounter that guy, uh, then there are ways you can exit. And also it doesn't have to... Ooh. It's a hiss at him. Visiting, yes. yeah. Take some advice from the cats. That's yeah. what happens. Usually, you make some make this sort of scream. Ah! You can do that as well. Um, that works. Uh, but also, uh, you know, even even sometimes, if, even if you're not getting like harassed or whatever, there are times when somebody might just be talk, 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 talking at you in some topic, and you don't want to stand there using up all of your networking time talking to this one person. But you don't want to hurt their feelings either, right? So. Uh, my best advice for just gracefully exiting is to basically use any bodily function as an excuse, okay? Um, so, I have to use the bathroom, that's one. Oh, I'm going to get another drink, you know? Um, I'm about to explode, anything, right? <laughs> like, it doesn't matter because everybody has a mortal body and they all kind of acknowledge that, yes, it is burdensome occasionally, and it does things we don't want to do. Oh, excuse yourself. They don't want to know about it. They don't want to see it. They would rather be as far away from you as possible when whatever it is happening is happening. Okay. So that's a way to just exit. 
Uh, if that makes you uncomfortable, fair enough. I'm not cool with having a human body either. I would rather be a nice clean blob living in a blob world, but that's another talk. Um, <laughs> yeah, well, there's an alternative you can use, uh, which is, uh, which I've forgotten when I write it down. Um, oh yeah, is a way you, you can just sort of hurl this person at another person, not literally, but you sort of go, oh, the thing you just mentioned, you know who likes that? Dave. And you just <laughs> throw them at it, the nearest Dave, and, and then you just walk away. And they don't run either because that's a giveaway. Right? And you just sort of sidle. Maybe not that flamboyant. Yeah. Okay. Uh, here's a recap of all of my advice. Yeah. You make a script, uh, make the first move, you know, ask for some help. Yeah, well, not me though. Um, make a I don't mean, you know, you know what I mean. You make a meeting appointment. Oh God, <laughs> all of it. Uh, own the awkwardness, huh? Uh, bring a friend. Yeah. Uh, let the other person talk, but if they don't want to talk, just babble like a mad person. Not, not too mad. No. No sense. Uh, and just accept that you're going to suck at this until you get good, like anything, all right? Like, I tried to start sewing recently and it was a disaster, but am I depressed by it? A little bit. But <laughs> I'm not letting it, letting it, you know, ruin my life and I might try it again. And that's the sort of attitude you need. Oh, practice. That's why it's in big fonts, because it's important. Ah, the interactive part of the talk. I will need three to four volunteers, please. Oh god, this happened last time. Come on! <laughs> yeah, look. Yes! All of you! Up here! All of us. To my stage. Excellent. Alright, so we're gonna I'm gonna demonstrate to you some methods you can use for uh, when you've got one of these rooms like this with people in it, and some of them are talking and you wanna also be involved in the talking. Uh, so I'm gonna all just stand there as if you're talking to each other, like you're having a really... Yeah, that's, that's spot on, dude. Okay, so, uh, you can... Touch your face now. So, uh, like, when they're t like, this is quite a tight circle, that's quite difficult, but there are ways and means to get in. <laughs> so what you're going to do is you just sort of sidle on in, in a little gap, try to find yourself a little gap, and you just sort of stare there, and you just sort of stare at them. And, <laughs> and eventually they'll either all just stop talking and stare at you like you're a widow, or, and that's when you go, hi, uh, or, then, keep talking, keep talking. <laughs> and you're like, ah, oh, yes, oh, the thing that you said is very good, right? But the point is, like, you just, you just move yourself in there and pretend you were like you were there the whole time. You just turn up, right? And it works, because nobody wants to acknowledge that something strange has happened, okay? Because that would break the spell and the magic of the technical gathering, yeah? So they're, so they're just going to roll with it, all right? Because... Because, uh, yeah, um, you can you compliment, you can just breeze on in, right? This is quite a bold move, not for beginners, okay? <laughs> Whoa, I love your shoes. I have the same ones, but in red. <laughs> like, <laughs> Theo is just like, what? <laughs> My soulmate, you know? <laughs> Damn, <laughs> see? Yeah. Um, you can just acknowledge, like, this is an own your awkwardness move, where you just sort of get in there and you're like, do you mind if I join you in your conversation? Just say it with less sneeze than that. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes. do you mind if I stand here and join you? Uh, did you say yes? <laughs> is it, I'm going to ask you, is it okay if I stand here and join you in your conversation? Absolutely. Yeah, see, you see how it works? It's flawless. It's not scripted at all. All right, thank you, <laughs> kind volunteers. <laughs> also, just on that note, if you are in a little group like that, you're lucky enough to already be in a conversation group, there's a there's a thing I've seen on the internet called like the Pac-Man rule, where you're going to make a little gap for someone, yeah? You know how Pac-Man's always got his mouth open because he's hungry? 
Yeah? So you pretend that that hungry mouth is part of your circle of people so that it can eat any person that trespasses in your zone. Right? And then they're there. <laughs> and then you've got them in your network. Um, yeah. So this is you now. Um, you know, beautiful and with the sun shining behind your head and people trying to touch you. But that's, um, um, thanks to my advice, that will be you. Uh, congratulations. Uh, yeah, uh, my last piece of advice is uh, don't ever think you're, well, if you're trying to talk to somebody online, like on LinkedIn or something like that, right, and you just want to get to know them or talk to them about a business thing or whatever, right, um, if, if you talk to them and say, like, like hey, uh, I had this, you know, let's meet up for lunch sometime, for instance, right, and they just don't ever get back to you, right, it's okay to message them one more time and go, Hey, sorry, I don't know if you, if you saw this. Or especially if they get back to you once ago, that'd be great, and then you never hear from them again, okay? Like, the fact is a lot of people just forget emails and stuff. There are an annoying amount of people out there who will look at a message, reply to it in their head, and then... <laughs> yeah, and then never look at it again, right? That is a really large... Yeah, see, that is a really large amount of people, okay? So, don't even think... Oh, I'm probably bothering them just because they didn't reply to my last email in the thread of 20 emails trying to work out a time and a place to meet for lunch or something, right? Like, they probably just didn't see it, you know? Just follow up and go, hey, uh, we're still on for lunch or something. There's a really good odds that they're going to go, yeah, okay, that's fine. I already those in my calendar, shoot it. Exactly, exactly. I, I thought it was in my calendar already. Oh, I thought I, thought I, I replied to it in my head, that kind of thing. It's, you know, and don't be afraid of making the first move on that either. You know, like nobody's nobody really gets that annoyed by you just getting a message of saying, "Hey, do you want to meet up for something?" Right? Um, obviously, don't send them twenty in a row within an hour. Uh, but see you're online. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> see you're online right now. What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? Don't do that. <laughs> uh, I would go with maybe two, three messages max. <laughs> and if they're still ignoring you, that's fine. But honestly, two messages, <coughs> you're fine. Don't worry about it. Uh, this is my awkward cat. I own this one. Um, and this is my shameless self-promotion because I'm at the end of the talk. Uh -huh. So uh, if you're interested in anything to do with software testing services, please visit my website. Uh, you, can, uh, you can email me if you feel like it. Don't ask me for any help or I will charge you. Um, <laughs> although, if you want me to charge you, please. <laughs> uh, you can follow me on Twitter uh, and uh, training courses. I do have some training courses uh, for software testing uh, at transfer.ro, which is, I'm really regretting that URL, by the way, but that's actually a URL. You can put it into your browser and I guarantee it'll work. So, end of talk. you all now to do the networking things. Questions. <laughs> Sorry, I encourage you now to ask me questions and then after that do the Does anyone have any questions? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I would say, um, yeah, it, it, it can be hard to learn that line, okay? And this is where I, I want to say, accept that you will suck for a while, all right? Because, I mean, we've all got an idea that there's an end of that spectrum, like, don't murder anybody while you're on the meetup, you know, right? But, but finding the bit in the middle between, like, do I, uh, is it okay for me to reach out to them on LinkedIn versus is it okay for me to like pat them on the back for a good job, you know, like that kind of thing. Uh, yeah, you get, you're gonna find, uh, trial and error is really gonna get you there. And there's a lot of just individual differences as well, yeah. So uh, I, th I think there are gonna be some times when some people are gonna go, uh, 
okay, no, I'm not going to talk to you for whatever reason, right? Um, and if you're finding that, just take it on board as a learning kind of experience, yeah? But also acknowledge that sometimes people are just having a bad day as well, right? You're going to try to talk to somebody, they don't want to talk to you because, you know, they've just you know, had coffee poured on them or something, right? It's not you, yeah? But, uh, yeah, you're just going to find that balance, yeah? I guess in terms of, like, what should you definitely not do? Um, just anything where you're, where you're just full on just... <laughs> not taking no for an answer in terms of harassing people, learn what a soft no looks like, <laughs> I think would be my advice. If people say, uh, oh, I'm kind of busy that week, that's a soft no, it means no, yeah? If people say, oh, yeah, maybe, that's probably a soft no, yeah? Um, I, I think that's your best guide. There's not any real hard and fast rules when it comes to human beings because everybody's a bit different, but just learning some social cues is a really good way to figure that out. It's annoying because human beings are complex. If there were computers, we wouldn't have this problem. One day. <laughs> <laughs> yes? So there's a philosophy of first impressions count and it sounds like you don't quite buy into it. So I, I would like your opinion because it's kind of uh, a default barrier for me. Let's imagine I have an opportunity to network with my ideal employer where I'd love to work. Mm -hmm. but I don't feel confident of it, so it's mm. better not to network and not mm. make the bad first impression ah. than to take the risk of screwing it up. Yeah, I think that's a tough one, but it, you, I think you can also look at it from the point of view of uh, are you never going to make that connection versus do you take the risk of screwing it up and then maybe you will make that connection, right? I think mm. the other thing is, yeah, some, first, some parts of first impressions count, but you can get multiple opportunities at that. Let's say you meet somebody for the first time and you want to make a good impression on them and you're messed up somehow. I don't know, you trip over and fall into their soup. Whatever, right? But you probably run into, if you can run into them again and then own that and be like, yeah, I know, well, what a crazy person I was last time. I'm sorry, I'm not usually like that. And, and try, to, try to do it again. You, know, you never know. They might give you another chance, right? I, I think also... Um, a lot of people can really overestimate how badly they can ruin things when I'm on first meeting somebody, right? Like, I have a lot of very anxious friends who, because of their anxiety, it, it, it convinces them in their head that they're going to mess everything up, right? And I, I think the fact of the matter is that even though a lot of us will walk away from a social situation thinking, oh, I shouldn't have said that, oh, such a, sounded like an idiot when I said that, the people that you're talking to are going to remember about 20% of that. <laughs> they're not going to remember very much of that at all. And they're not hanging on every word that you said like your anxious brain is hanging on to, right? Um, so, I th I, yeah, I, I think it's probably better in general to take the chance. Have a little more faith in yourself. Um, yeah. Does that answer that? Yeah, yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, yeah. And first, first impressions can be hard anyway, right? Like. Look, I'm a woman in IT, so just about every person I meet, I'd, I'd just walk in going, Hi, I'm Trish Koo, I can code. I know this programming language, this programming language, this programming language. Because, you know, that just, uh, just you know, gets rid of a whole lot of unconscious biases. Uh, but, yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I, I guess that it, it is good to have that script in your head for that reason, right? Is you, if you want to present yourself in a certain way to some people in a professional setting, like you think, hey, my future employer might be here. Um, then, then yeah, try to, try to have in your head that when you introduce yourself, you drop in something like, hey, I'm Trish Kuhn, I used to work at Google, you know, <laughs> like something like that. Um, so that at least uh, they, they'll have that in their heads and, and that might negate any weird things to do later. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you never know. It's like that sandwich rule where if you're going to do something weird and messed up, at least do it in the middle. But the beginning and end have to be very sane. <laughs> yes. I have, I have something to add to that because I just I was at um, the code event uh, that was happening today, and one of the presentations was on building personal brand. Yes. And there was a fantastic thing about it. Two things, in fact. One is she really stressed on your LinkedIn and the summary section of your LinkedIn. The second thing she stressed on is having preparing your bio. And I think that's where it links. She, she was really stressing that you only get 30 seconds to impress somebody. So you really want to know 
what you want to speak, especially with bio, like you know, what company you're working for, what you're interested in, what your job is. Mm. So rather than thinking it on the spot, and I haven't done it, I'm just blogging what I did two hours ago, which is like you just write it down, you just prepare it. So every single time you're meeting somebody, at least that thing, that five or ten lines are in your head, so you mm. just start spewing straight away without even thinking. That probably gives you that good 30 seconds to ease your. Yeah. And now I'm very awkward as well when it's approaching somebody. But that's what I was thinking that that might help me. That's what might buy me that 30 or 60 seconds yeah. to cool the nerves. And that uh, yeah. little bit of confidence as well that, okay, I did that first thing right. Yeah, oh, that's right. Continue with it. <laughs> that, and that's the advantage of having a script like that, right? Because it builds your confidence because you're like, hey, I got that interaction correct. Huh? Good stuff. 100 out of 100. <laughs> Take right? that, humans. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, I know how to interact with people. Yeah, but you're right. Like, personal brand is, is, is a really good topic, and it's a really good way to market yourself and, and get people to remember you in, in the way that you want them to remember you. I would, I would also say that um, don't be too hard on yourself if you haven't got that whole spiel figured out, right? It can be a lot of pressure for some people to hear that and go, uh, oh, I need to have this whole pitch for myself every time I go and meet somebody, right? You don't, yeah? Um, unless you're like an independent consultant like me and Damien. <laughs> In which case, yeah, that's important for our business. But for everyone else, uh, it's probably less important. It's a, it's a good thing to think about, though. Yeah? If brand sounds intimidating and marketing, you can just think of it as identity. Yeah, so, like, that's true. It's the belief of, of who you are and your, your identity. Yeah. Yeah, don't, don't have an existential crisis over it. Um, <laughs> but, um, <laughs> think a little bit about it. If you start to go down that road like I tend to on a Sunday night, then just uh, don't worry. Yeah, that's why you don't but, Friday with the wine. I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> but, uh, no, it, it, it is good. Like, it, look, it, your identity in a professional setting can be as simple as, hi, I'm Dave, I work for a big corp, you know? Right? It, that, I'm a developer who does blah, you know? It, it doesn't have to be complicated. It doesn't have to be like... Uh, like my values are compassion and giving. Yeah, yeah, you don't have to bear your soul to everybody. You don't worry, uh, or just even just, yeah, it doesn't even have to be like a summary of your resume or anything like that. It can just be a headline as simple as like as like what I said, right? Yeah. See where you summarize my hobbies. Cool. No. All right. Thanks.